I did add a little conting contingency that wasn't in there previously. Yep. Um, just as a factor of safety for you know anything that might come up. So there's a margin of error, a plus or minus in that number. Yes, there is. Yeah. And then the, if you can, rem the original one, this 3G that was larger was 7.7. 7. Yeah, it should be 3H. I'm sorry. I no, that's that okay. To go through. <clears throat> I just, if I remember right, it was around it seven. Was seven. 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 Yeah. Yeah, so saving square footage, obviously, that's a you know, if we're just considering square footage as the, you know, the basis for the cost, um, we'll see what the estimator comes back with. And, you know, because a lot of, there's a lot of expensive conditions in the building, like the plumbing system, you know, it's, there's a lot of floor drains, there's a lot of, uh, you know, post connections, you know, sinks that are expensive. You got the greenhouse that has its own, you know, with its own uh, water connection uh, or you know water distribution to that space. Uh, so it's quite a bit in the building for plumbing. Um, the HVAC system is it's going to be you know on the expensive side because of the electrification and the lack of the requirement that we not use fossil fuels um, in building. Think of a timeline that we'll get this information. Two weeks after I submit it, so like I said, in the next couple of days, I will have to get back to him. We'll turn it right around quicker, but that's, that's the issue. Okay. So, and I, I understand that we're all kind of in a hurry to get this, you know, <coughs> wrapped up and you know, approved, and, you know, to move to the next stage.
this early exercise, rather keep it a little bit higher. Um, if we have a slope roof, you know, when we want to try and have a different look to it, they do have PVC roofing that has like a, a vertical rim on it, almost like a standing seam roof, but won't have the cost of the standing seam metal roof. Uh, they have to get the look that uh, those offer. Shops, we have the hand washing sinks, 
Uh, we have uh, trench drains to, you know, allow the, you know, occupants of the spaces to, you know, hose down the room and uh, clean up the spaces. So the electrical outlets will need to be waterproof around the perimeter. We talked about like an eight foot, you know, uh, spacing in between the, uh, the different outlets. Or only in the, uh, in the head house. Certain things in there. We'll probably have a trench drain in the floor there, you know, just for cleanup and uh, hose connection. And in the uh, greenhouse space too, hose connection and uh, and uh, trench drains. Um, and the equipment repair shop is pretty standard to have like explosion proof and and uh, waterproof outlets. So that's that's noted as well. All the lighting will be LED. Uh, Waterproof in the uh, spaces that need it, and pretty standard when we get into the classroom areas. And you know, again, you know, it, it sounds like pretty standard school stuff. And uh, you know, I think the designer that ends up going forward with this, hopefully, it's neat. Um, if not, you know, there'll be opportunities to explore, you know, other conditions. But you know, I want to have something down here that is, I think, sensitive to cost issues. So once we see where the estimator comes in, may open up opportunities or need further exploration to reduce cost. <coughs> so um, I guess uh, you know. If you guys want to take a look and read through the, uh, you know, the description or the scope of work, you know, I'll, I'll send you an updated version of it when I get the HVAC information in. Uh, uh, this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good thing for what, what we know right now. So, in the, if you look at the site plan, I try to keep that pretty limited to um, the way the site plan. I haven't looked at it because it came in to the office five minutes before I left. And just kind of print, you know, put it into the into the PowerPoint, which didn't work, and uh, print it out. And so, hopefully, they did what I told them to do, and um, you know, keep it all pretty minimal when it comes to uh, uh, the sidewalks on the on the road side of the building, <coughs> the paving on the back side. You know, looking at the paving and knowing where the existing paving ends trying to just pave down just past where the access um, paved area comes out from the overhead door of the, of the shop area. Um, I don't want to, you know, put in too much. You know, they had originally they had paving down the road, which, you know, isn't really, it's, it would be nice, but it's not safe to, you know, complete a test to the project. And then, you know, there was a parking area in front of the retail areas, but I think we wanted to kind of make that an alternate to, you know, if we didn't have enough money, then that's something that we could cut out and may, may not make a lot of difference for, you know, the space that you need immediately. Yeah, it's more educational than retail. So, I mean, shrinking up the building obviously made a big impact on, you know, the space around it. You know, we're not coming as close to the trees as we had been previously. Um, and I think there's, you know, I kind of left a lot of landscaping out. We have a lot of green area around it, but, you know, I think that you have, I guess, uh, inherent opportunity to, uh, to improve the building or the surrounding of the building in-house. And so it, I guess it gives your students, uh, you know, that that uh, opportunity. Thoughts? No, it's uh, very comprehensive, Kevin. This this matrix is very detailed. Um, thank you for your efforts. And uh, so. You're getting info to the cost estimator to get back with more realistic numbers for our budget purposes, and then we have to uh, we have to uh, start moving 
forward, getting this project out for uh, RFPs for an OPM, design services. Have you had any conversations with the city in regards to that? Yes, Joe Cook is aware of this meeting today, um, and I will be, I will share this information with him, and then we'll move forward with Joe and Tim on the designer selection. In your initial conversations, was there any indication of timeline of how quickly things could move forward? So he'll review this, um, make sure that everything's in there with the scope, um, and give us the okay, then we post and set the, 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 the date for opening of the bid. Um, and then depending on making going through the bid, deter we have to determine what the timeline is for reviewing the bids to make sure that it's all, everything's in the scope. Mm -hmm. So generally we, we move that out an additional two weeks, so probably a month. Um, Joe Cook's last day is February 20th, so I'm not sure. I don't believe they have anybody for that position yet. That is my understanding. So we need to get this out. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, before the design phase, I thought Joe Cook mentioned that we should be getting the OPM locked in first, who would then assist us with that next phase, correct? So he just said the way we did it was a little backwards this time, so yes. And due to the size of the project with the new regs and OPMs required, yes. right? And uh, Kevin's got a budget estimate in here of uh, 125, I think, yeah. for, for those services. Okay. Um, I don't know what to say, Kevin. You really did an incredible job here. Um, it's very detailed, very comprehensive. You've dealt with our back and forth, and uh, Joe's smirking over there. Um, so, Mark's not here today. James, you got any comments? Only that, you know, we started this out with, you know, making something fit for the next 40 years. And unfortunately, it feels like we're getting something smaller than might fit us down the road. But, you know, I think one of the things that comes to mind is if we find in the design phase that we can afford more, I think having a larger classroom would be helpful. Um, because I think unless the new spaces were remodeling somewhere else within the ad cluster offer a larger classroom than 800 square feet, that could be problematic down the road if we're growing our programs. Okay. We're having to uh, <clears throat> deal with reality here and what money we have. Yeah. And, and, you know, we all would love to have our wish list, but I don't think, and Andy mentioned it last week, if you're in the minutes that uh, we've got a lot of other projects that are taking place on comp campus and is cautious of overspending and that's well stated we need to uh, <clears throat> be concerned obviously and we love to do whatever we can for the students because that's our priority here is to make this a reality to uh, bring our program up to uh, of the top level and there's a lot of moving parts here anybody else mr kaline oh i think that again i congratulate deeds for the job that they've done and listen i mean that's the thing we we told him what we wanted and he he, he crunched the numbers and squeezed it and pulled it through the hopes and did the best he could and uh, i think it's our job now to <coughs> present it uh, to Joe Cook, like you said, and get the blessing from the city, and, and then I'm disappointed that the city has not brought another person to be that transparent handoff, uh, because you bring a guy or lady in cold, and we're putting this in their lap, and it's just like you see the calendar go, and things were sitting here with no information a few months ago. I mentioned earlier about the clock's ticking for everybody, and 
and, uh, and Andy's got a school to run, and we got to have buildings and put the students in, and, and uh, so there's a lot of pressure coming all the way around, and I want to do whatever I can do from my side with the trustees to try and acquiesce and do what we can, but dollars are dollars, and uh, reality is reality. So I don't have a magic wand. Strictly, it's strictly day by day in regards to what the end result's going to be. Uh, and we try to paint a positive picture uh, what's coming. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not what we wanted, but I think it's what we can afford. And <coughs> uh, with, with the insurance money and with the monies that we got from grants, and we, we walked out there to, to try and find every dollar that we can find. Uh, I'm still um, want to work with Jim McGovern on some federal money, so we've got not seeing the window shut totally on some other opportunities that I will help pursue. Uh, so that we're just talking about today's dollars, what we have in our pocket today, but that doesn't stop us from going out and knocking on doors for more. Well, I don't I think you may have misunderstood me. I'm just saying, if as we go through the frills and bells and whistles, we find for some odd reason prices out a lot less than we're expecting right okay. now, <clears throat> it would be nice if that extra money could allow for a larger classroom. If that makes sense. Because um, yeah, the other concern is, is the greenhouse proposed in this is 500 square feet smaller than the one we currently have. And I know that's a big kind of an important thing for us. I thought we were just moving over. We are. Yeah, I, just think it, I just think it's the design. Okay. Yeah, I think if I could, I think, I'd like to back up James. If there is money, I'd like to find places for it. Um, maybe it is a classroom, maybe it's not, but currently these are the biggest classrooms on campus at 800 square feet. Um, and I know why he's asking for it, but there are other spaces if we had to. There may be other improvements that we can do in that space that are going to uh, directly impact students. So I I agree with James in looking at where maybe some of those dollars could go to make a better product. But as you said, Mr. Kayleen, dollars are dollars, so we gotta we gotta deal with the ones we got. Well we're certainly willing to look at all options, <coughs> absolutely. We've got we gotta get there and we gotta get this out. We're we're in the timeline. In the timeline, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Go and ahead. The bigger grant that we just received, the $5 million grant, is in line to spend the, that money as well. Okay. June 2020. Uh, June 2025. Five. We've got two and a half years. And um, I know Crystal's named the contact person, and I think they're looking to meet with her every month to see where we're at and how we're progressing. And we would draw down the grant funds before using the insurance money. That would be my goal, obviously, to make sure that we use the um, the grants before the insurance money. Because that would definitely... Yeah, two and a half years to spend that money. So back to Joe Cook, very next step... Tomorrow morning. ...is how do we get an OPM on board? I'll be calling him first thing tomorrow morning. Okay, bring... Are there any names out there? Welcome, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I don't know Kevin, suggestions on OPMs? On OPMs, there's there's some that are local that I hope will you know go after this project. Um, <coughs> names, names. I can I can send them to you. I keep Rich Sitnik. What's he? Arcadis. <laughs> You're rolling your eye. <laughs> I've worked with Arcadis before. <coughs> yeah, I've worked with them. I uh, um, they didn't find them too bad. Um, I think it's it well. I've worked from who you get. Yeah, you know, as the project manager, because everybody's different. Um, you know, I think it's the same. It, it goes the same way as with designers. You know, you know, we don't have the most experience. Probably could find somebody much more qualified than Beats and Company, but you know. I'm committed to this this project, and uh, I live in town, so. Well, you certainly have shown your best commitment, interest to, uh, your, your commitment is not questioned at all. But, but you know, finding somebody <laughs> local that is committed to the project, I, I would recommend going in that direction. Mm -hmm. uh, Just as an overview of the money, um, 
right now the economic bond bill amendment at 275000 from Senator Comerford, uh, that is totally not dead yet. It's still out there. Uh, I received a no notification at wow. the end of December. Um, we had a complete uh, a form that Crystal and I completed. We submitted it to the contact person at the scene that we've been assigned to. Um, so it's still out there. But let's assume for the second, keep our fingers and toes crossed that we do receive that, that money. Um, counting every penny between insurance money, the grants that we received, donations that we received, and this economic bond bill uh, amendment, we're at $5,876,059, so about $800,000 short from the current estimate. Um, I'll talk about it this evening at the board meeting. You know, we, I had a conversation with Smith College a week ago, two weeks ago now. Um, we had no guarantees that Smith College will, will assist, uh, but they're going to go back and, and look at some options. But 800000 is is a much smaller of a gap than what we started with back in July. So I really do appreciate the work, Kevin, that you put in. Um, that's where we're at currently. And I want to thank you, Andy, for, because I know that you stayed up nights, and I know the sleepless nights, but from the day one, uh, trying to to pull this all together, and you and Joe, 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 it's just, you know, I'm frustrated, because I'm saying, oh, we're still short, and, uh, and where do we go from here? Uh, but I, I want to thank you all for <coughs> definitely researching and trying to find every dollar that's out there. And, uh, and it's not unrecognized, I want to tell you that, that Port Bristol is pulling it through the garden hose as well to take every dollar. And the contributions that we got from our local community here was big dollars. And the local industry stepped up with a lot of equipment in regards to donations. And uh, so the, the community is fully aware of, of our point of where we're at. Uh, I can't thank them enough either, but without still got work to do. Right, with, without those two grants, the, the $2.1 million grant that we received back in September and the $5 million grant that we just received in December, uh, when you look at those two grants, the amount that we're able to use towards facility upgrades, um, you're looking at $4.1 million. Four, that's $4.1 million of the $5.8 million came from those two particular grants. So my point is, thank you to both Joe and Melanie for, for getting those grants. Because without that, quite honestly, we're sitting. I believe we're sitting here talking today about simply rebuilding what we lost and not entirely. Yeah, different ballgame. It is. Uh, so I just have to put thank that on the record. Well said. Andy. <coughs> Mr. Bowman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. So wrap up this portion of the meeting. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when it comes to the OPM, you know, I think. You really need to find out exactly what they're going to do for you, and uh, you know, they may say you know you need a certain amount of services, and that's going to cost you know twice as much as what I have on the paper here. And you know, I think that you do have some expertise here, and don't necessarily need the full boat of of uh, uh, tasks. Mm -hmm. and, Upgrades, yeah, right. That that they might offer. Sure. To you, so you know. I think when it comes to you know both designers and OPMs, you know, with the with the MSBA, I'm talking specifically, it's like you know a number gets put out there and it gets put into a budget, and then nobody ever goes back and looks at it later on to say, does this number make sense? You know, and so towns are paying a lot more than what the <coughs> services are that they're getting mm -hmm. um, because they're not. They don't know what it is that they're up agreeing to or approving, you know, to begin with in the in the first stages of the project. So just a just a heads up advice. Yeah, a heads up to to find out what you're going to be getting for the number that they that they offer you. Well, everybody that is going to work with us is going to know very rapidly about our control of every dollar and. Not to, to be cheapskates, but to get the dollars worth. And, and that's where we're at. So there's no fluff. And, and, uh, everybody we can't afford fluff. Table, that's what I'm everybody sitting at this table is on the same page. And that's great. <laughs> and much All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, sir. Yeah. <coughs>
Sullivan. Yeah. They provide I, OPM services. Yeah, I haven't really worked with them in a long time. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, um, they just recently did the uh, West Hampton uh, Safety Complex, I think it is. Um, yeah, I'm sure they'd be interested in doing this. Yeah. But, and, and your point's well taken of, of, of them trying to sell services we don't necessarily need. Thank you. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Any Thanks, Kevin. Questions, feel free. I'll see you at recycling. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, Tim, you ready? Yep. You go over projects. Yep. And I know we got a lot of moving parts, and um, Crystal provided this um, an order of importance. Why don't I? start with this well um, we have all these projects listed and we need to start prioritizing and figuring out our path and how it's going to be handled and who's going to do it we do it in the house or outsourcing so I, I gave that list to crystal and most everything's basically happening at the same time yeah but there are certain things that have to happen for the next thing to those timelines yeah. yeah no this this and I met with Andy earlier and this dovetails into pretty much what we were we discussed um, yeah number one get the get the uh, former GCC rec building uh, finished renovated for animal science so that the students can move into there for the end of February slash March 1st and you feel we're on target with that I don't know you know it, it's all I don't know I'm hoping it works that way Okay, and this yeah. is this is in house. Yeah, we're, I would say we're doing what we can to be on target for that. So we're having weekly meetings. Tim's been uh, really working the supply chain and trying to get things going. <clears throat> All the construction trades department heads are together, and what you know they're making it work within the student schedule. So I think we're doing what we can to meet that deadline. All right, <clears throat> we we just met with uh, <clears throat> the final plans for rebuilding and start process for going out for design and construction. Crystal's going to be talking to Joe tomorrow morning. <clears throat> Get that process moving forward. Excuse me. I, did, yep. I already sent Joe an email just to give him a heads up. Beautiful. We'll be reaching out to him. Thank you. Um, during April vacation, demo the pig barn for future animal companion building. That ties in with our our animal science um, initiative to get all that together. Yes, and that's going out to bid. I mean, that, that's going out not in house. Right. Well, so you get some options there. So if you go out to bid, you know, regular construction. It's close to a million dollars to build that for the square footage. Hey, are you asking to build it or to demo it? Uh, tell me each one. Okay. What, what are your thoughts? I got one quote to demo it for twenty-five grand. From Associated Building Records, okay. um, I do feel it's a pretty small building, and that we could probably demo it ourselves in house in that week. I mean, if you peel off that roof, the the, the walls would come down fast with your staff. Yeah. 
in, instead. So I got the, I got the twenty five thousand dollar quote from Associated. I got a couple other guys I'm on a call that are smaller outfits just to see what they would what they would charge. What are your thoughts on that project? I, I, I want to support Tim one thousand percent. I also my only concern is um, overloading you and your crew. I know you're already stretched out way too thin. Yeah. And second of all, the, the liability. God forbid something does happen if we're doing a demo on ourselves. Are we we own that versus if we contract out and they mess something up, they don't. So uh, it's just I, I don't want to overstress your crew. I know you're already overstressed, and I want to make sure that liability were covered. Those are my two concerns. So in the big picture, you know, there's demo costs and then there's reconstruction, right? So you could go out the bid and pay, spend a lot of money, or we could try to build it in house. Um, I, I'd like to hire a a carpenter I have who's got years experience with uh, concrete, putting forms, pouring slabs. Have Rennie do that. Uh, have my electrician run wire power to it, stub it up, and bring all that water and utilities into the slab. And then have Rennie frame it. And with Giles working with him, and I throw in some guys from the uh, maintenance crew, we frame it up. Electrical and plumbing go in and do their thing, and be pretty far ahead down the road for September. Not saying to be ready, but but get that and save a boatload of money in the process. What does that do timeline for your daily activities for what you already have on your plate? Well, it would put a dent on what we do, yeah. you know. But we would just just cut back just to realize we're not going to be in two places at once. You can't be in two places at once, right? So priorities again would go back to our list of right. So if if we went this route and said, okay, you know what, you guys frame it, what do the slab and frame it. Um, and then we save that money on the construction. Then we just contract out to have it demo. So that's off the liability is off us. We get someone to do the site work, and you and you pour your foundation in slab. And I would so I would have whatever building um, plan you have. We get them as soon as possible, and we go out to bid on on construction material right away. So it's sitting here while we're, I'd rather have it sitting here two months waiting for us than. So wait for two months. There's a note here, need to get update on conceptual design phase and move on final design and decision on the format of construction, which we're talking the format. Yep. Um, do you have any conceptual design? Have you been talking to somebody? No, I, I, I've not really been, I, I don't know how far he is. He's kind of doing what Kevin's doing right now, this company, P2. And does this have to go through the uh, city procurement <coughs> process or are we able to handle this more streamlined? So if we're just doing give us some building plans for our in-house and maybe you know give us electrical um, plans and HVAC I, we can do that in-house we don't we're not maybe we go out to bid on it but it's not as big a project as what you're going to do in forestry. Right. And then oh, we'll I'll take those plans and you know frame it kids elect put the electric <coughs> plummet we hire an HVAC okay. guy to do his part. Well, I have to defer to admin on if you guys feel you can handle it in-house. I think we'd have to, I like Tim's plan, to be honest, um, but I think we'd have to really just sit down with the construction trades and figure out a, what's a, a reliable timeline for the work. Um, obviously, they're not going to be here doing anything over the summer, so if you, if it's, demoed at April break, which is what we want, <clears throat> you have six weeks, eight, seven and a half weeks until the end of school. Um, I, I don't know how much we're going to get done inside. I think having the summer is going to free the guys up if that's the major project that's happening on campus to be able to do uh, versus, you know, just the day-to-day -day cleaning that happens when there's students here and all of us, so you're not going to have that right. um, wear and tear going on that they have to take care of. Um, so it would really be planning for that fall timeline to, uh, you know, get the construction trades in there, and, and which we, let's be honest, it would be an amazing opportunity. We know that our sister schools are doing the same thing. They're building buildings approximately that size as part of their expansion uh, with their crews. So I think it's something our kids are capable of. We would really just have to meet in very quickly here and plan out what the fall looks like before they begin to take on outside work or other things. Well, we know construction trades. <coughs> We've had a very mild winter, and they've been staying busy. 
And, but when spring breaks and warmer weather, they're going to be signed up for projects. So mm -hmm. we've got to be the leader, not the follower. We want people on the outside, I believe. But if, if, we, if we took this on, framing it, right, you would, we wouldn't want to wait, pause, and wait for kids to get back. No, we? I'm thinking more of what you were talking about, the phase with the electric, electricity, water, right. you know, plumbing, and that kinds of stuff. That, that I, don't, I don't think you're going to have it. By the time it's framed and ready, even if you were ahead before June 10th, they're already cleaning their shops and shutting down. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, right. <clears throat> so I'm just thinking. I'm thinking that fall, we need to plan out what that fall looks like with these groups. Right? Yep. And again, we need to be mindful of that grant money for that building expires a year earlier than the horticulture building. Right. And I think this timeline would get us there. But I'm just thinking if, well, April or May. Could we revisit it if they're ahead of schedule? Could we revisit it and look to see if Tim said, "Hey, you know what? They're they're they moved along along a lot faster. Could this this is our next step? Do we have the money to pay for this? Right. Could we assess it like that? Yeah, absolutely. But I think yeah, that just puts onus on us to have a meeting within the next couple of weeks to get this on their radar so that they understand what may or may not happen, what it looks like if it happens in the in May versus what it could potentially look like in. September, October, November. Right. Um, yeah, the big linchpin, like everybody's talking about, is that building down back. That gets done, that moves all the students out. We were waiting till the pigs left, which was part of that timeline. Um, and then that way that building becomes, we functionally it would become unnecessary to do what we need to do this year in, for curriculum-wise and education. So it would become, that's the perfect time for it to become expendable to start this project. We're going to be shifting all the students, shifting all that stuff, and then shifting animals down to the other barn as needed. And then simultaneously with the MS classroom. You yeah, you'd, yeah, you'd start all that. I mean, you'd have to start the, the drains and the road. You'd have to do it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. kind of all, yeah. The MS classroom, I'm hoping it's not a huge, huge job, just, you know, yeah, I think that cosmetics almost. I think it's that sewer. I think that the work. plumbing is the, yep. the biggest part in that. Well, I, 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 what I'm hearing is I, I like the <coughs> idea of um, that you outsource the demo and get that done in April. And so get your ducks in order to move with your crews. Um, I mean, best case, Tim, would be if, for some, if we're done, and you're, we're able to have a company demo at the beginning of April, yep. which would give time for I mean, April technically break. we could kick the pigs April out almost any time. To Tomorrow. Oh, well, it's, it all really depends on the kids. Once the kids move out of there. Yeah, the, ki the kids is, yeah, the, I mean, is, the, is the biggest part. The kids are the biggest part. Yeah, we have to get the classroom and locker room, bathrooms done, then get yeah. out of the building. But then it's like, yeah, it's, it's shifting the pigs so that we still obviously have them for the FFA. Well, uh, Giles can be, move them over to the MS barn, right? Just put them where the sheep are, basically. Raise them there. So we have a spot. Yeah. So. Pigs and rats. All right, but so, but like I said, if if everything went, you know, no no problems, no hiccups, and the construction just went boom, and yeah, all of a sudden, never, you know, I'm just saying, happens. I just want the option. Uh, Drew, the electrician, you know, and, and hey, Drew, you can go ahead, and, you know, do the roughing or something, you know, and go that way just to push mm -hmm. it. Somewhere the dog pound is going to get built soon. They, they want that sooner than later. So, yeah, that that will be the next project that maybe all the we shops will be on campus. Yeah, what do you know about that? And you, we touched on it a little bit. And, uh, I haven't heard of them. Andy hasn't heard anything more about it. Have you? No, uh, trying to get more money from the city. So Kevin's working on that, kind of doing what we're doing here um, with this much money. How how big a building can we get? And um, so it's either have a 1500 square foot building that really they're just walking on top of each other or get another half a million dollars to, to build a 2000 foot building. <clears throat> but, right. the, but the whole process started eight years ago so all those estimates don't mean anything especially in this environment. Yeah and they already have a conceptual drawing that Roy Brown did. Yep that, that's what they were looking at so. Okay so how are we moving forward with this? April's right around the corner. <coughs> yes. Before Blink will be here. So you're going to be in the house? So it's really what Joe had to meet once a week, week meeting on, on the old rec building. 
push that. I can I can set up the um, I can go get two more bids on demo on that and have that set up, be, you know, within a couple of weeks. And then it's just push on that building on the rec building, move the pigs out and tear it down and hope a right. vacation earlier. Do you guys support that? Uh, absolutely. absolutely. All right. So I guess that's a a, a path of action. So you'll get a couple more demo bids and. You got one from Associated Building Records for 25. Yep. And I tend to agree with Andy. A lot of risk with with that. Um, it probably be, it'd be best to outsource that. Okay. All right. Uh, and then Melanie touched on uh, the MS classroom. That's going to have to be. <coughs> this is all going to dovetail together. It'd have to be concurrent. Yeah. Concurrent. concurrent. Okay. Which is how we when we originally when we originally planned the the phases, um, that that really that that building down back getting done really unlocks all the other spots and that's sure. the, the other spots become concurrent. So that's <coughs> top 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 priority. <coughs> so we can move on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, AC project and C building scheduled to start. Um, that's outsourced. Yeah, That's so I'm, we're going to, I don't think I can get it in Central Register this week, so it'll probably be next week. So it, it, you have? It's, I, I look at the plans, we're all set to go. Who's just, the engineer? Is that uh, Towsley? Towsley? Towsley Associates, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's ready to get out for bid? To advertise, yep. You've got that on the radar, Crystal? Oh, obviously you do, you put this list together. <laughs> um, Sidewalk upgrades set to start during the coming summer. Is yeah, I'm still trying to get Mike here. He keeps promising he's coming. Yeah, well, he they shut down their yeah you know, shut down their firm for the Christmas break, and his wife has been pretty sick. So, um, but he's still been giving us information, elevations for work down back. He's been getting to the architect. So, all right. Um, before I move on with this list, something's bothering me. Um, the Apple paddock slash Apple storage floor repair that went out for rebid and now you've accepted a bid and yep, we have just, someone. Yep, I forget who the company is. At Cornerstone, is that it? I think you're right. I think you're right. So We're that's just, ready to come to the trustees to approve the vendor and then it'll be a contract. Do we have okay. a dollar amount? I mean, the first stage is 99000 The first stage is ninety-nine thousand. I think the second stage. One second. We have money already put uh, aside for this. Improvement, yeah. So the two phases. If we do the first one structurally, and that makes it safe for everyone to go in, we can do that. But if we go and do the next phase, I think it's the roof or the siding. It puts us over what the city will give us. So we would have to come up with some of our own money. I think it was like forty thousand more. So. But the. First phase is a structural repair, so yep. we can get back in. Yep. Okay. But there again, if if we had money later, we could just buy material. I think that'd be a good student project. Do the siding, do the roofing. Can we clone you too? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. They got the information. So yes, it is cornerstone. The base bid is ninety-nine thousand six hundred and seventy-one. Then alternate one is an additional 122,229, and then alternate two is an additional 106,602. I think one of the bids for the metal roofing came in for over 100,000 on that roof, and Giles is putting the roof on up at the Birds Pit Road. I think we wow. paid six grand on one side, you know, for material only. You know, it's the markup is pretty substantial. Okay. And this is uh, finished replacing the barn roof on Burt's Pit Road. As of now, one half has been completed and end wall replaced. That's what you're just referring to. Yeah, correct. That's Giles doing that. And so is that, are you able to fit that? How are you able to fit this all in? Giles like is an uh, excellent asset. He's been doing all that work up there, um, so you're pretty much done for the winter, right? Up there, yeah, it's, it's buttoned up for the winter, yeah. Because he's working down here. <coughs> they're putting up uh, 
motel, but just a greenhouse. <coughs> uh, so they're doing that, finishing that up. All right. And then as this all is coming together, somebody um, further explain to me, relocate farrowing, farrowing pens to the dairy barn. Those are for the pigs? Yep, so those are in the pig barn. We just got to make something in the, in the dairy barn. The pens down there for them. So. That'll be for future once we displace the pigs. Once we do get that, all that future get the, years. Yeah, that'll be for next year. We're going to need them until next February. So, so this, this, this is in the future. Well, it's got to be kept on the radar because we're well, going back. Everything's, yes, that's that's the whole purpose of this yeah. this subcommittee meeting is to keep the things on the radar and just let's schedule them appropriately and figure out are we doing it in house or out outsourcing. Uh, during the summer, install new LED light fixtures, replace drop ceiling, paint walls, epoxy flooring, and auto body before we start have the original floor removed by abatement company. I gotta imagine that whole scope of work is being outsourced. Yeah. Well, you know, the abatement will be done by, you know, whoever buy or some compass and then you yeah. know I'll get um, orchard to put the lights in and we'll do the drop ceiling and the, the rest of it. So does this for the abatement part yep. to be able to do the new epoxy flooring? Yep. Um, doesn't that need to get out to bid if you want to get this done this summer? Uh, I had a guy come in and give me a quote when he was here over the winter vacation. It's going to be about ten grand to do that. Um, we're so going to do their office. We too. don't need to go through a big formal process. We yeah. can stream. Purchase order is fine. So yeah. Anything okay. over ten thousand is three quotes, and we'll be able to get those quotes, and then we can just use a purchase order. Okay. And how's this being paid for? This is. Tim's already purchased the light, the lighting, and the drop ceilings. Yep. I'm um, using facility funds. Um, the the other funds, I'm not sure yet. Have the cafeteria painted during the summer. That outsourced. I yeah, I I, I, the cafeteria, and I think we're going to try to do a Agnac. shop. Agma. Yeah. It's just big enough and more. We did it before. It's just a pain in the ass. So someone else can do it. As if they're building the building. Okay. Um, we got all these other things that, that just again we need to keep on the radar. We've got to prioritize. This was great. Thank you, Crystal, Tim, Andy, Joe. I imagine you all had a part in putting this together. And um, so the one thing that isn't on there that you've been looking for is some might to get us a path or get us the cheapest way to get power and utilities up to the building leads. And he's just, I'm really focusing on the sidewalks and, and getting the elevations for there right now. So, but hopefully he'll get on that. Yeah. Um, so we don't want to forget about our property up in Leeds and making use of that and bringing it to its full capacity of utilization. And um, I don't sound like a broken record. We just got to keep things in focus and decide what we can do, when we can do it, how can we do it. And um, so, okay. Anybody got any comments they wish to throw out on the table, Ms. Crystal? The chip activated entry doors. So I've been waiting for the vendor. Uh, we were you going to use the MHEC contract. MHEC, um, are you familiar? That's the Massachusetts Higher Consortium. Okay. So that's another um, bid. Um, they have not updated their reports or their prices, so now we're going to the state bid list um, using a contract there. All right. Um, so that is. We're still moving move. forward. Yes, we're still moving forward. Again, we're waiting on the vendor. Um, and the vendor is, um, we currently use them for other items. I, um, Josh does with IT, so jo Josh has been working with this vendor to make sure that it, everything ties in together. Okay, um, as long as you brought that up, we got FY24 capital improvement projects, and we got what, a petition for two hoods and some 
management system for the ACA. In the management system. Yep. Those have not been awarded yet. And so that ma the energy management system for that AC um, is more money that we're going to be able to afford in one year. So we're trying to have the city do it at the $150,000 increments. So this year we'll be put in the split systems and they'll just run and then everyone will get cooled. And then the next year we'll put in half the man energy management system and then the third year it finishes off. And it ties into the, the boilers that, so the city wants most of our electricity, our heat coming from those splits. So it, it reduces our carbon imprint, just about shuts the boilers down. So, and we went through this with Chris Mason and the Energy Commission. So, and how's the dollars work out? Could have been it's no expensive to be money. Uh, carbon neutral. So, yeah, think of all the polar bears we're saving. So, Jesus, it's beautiful. Uh, so my, my one question, Tim, is uh, and back to <clears throat> if we're building a building, a new pig bar over the summer, yep. how are we fitting in out of body related? Um, the cleaning of this of the campus. Yep. So really, my most of my crew is are cleaning, right? They're just going to do that. Um, as far as the auto body, so we'll have the abatement company come in and do that. Um, we'll pull down the ceiling tiles and then call Orchard Electric to come in and put the uh, lights in. And it would be two guys if I can get a couple. If I if I can get two people to to work this summer, additional people, but we don't have much luck. It would be two people putting up <coughs> the tiles for three days, and then Joe can paint the walls sub out the, the floor maybe. I, I, I see that doable, you know, in the course of two months. I think we can do that. Because <coughs> who's working down with Giles and Rennie building and framing it is, is a different group. So. All right. And then uh, at some point, um, some woman that lives up on Burps Pit Road is going to come in <coughs> and address us in regards to the Smith Farm Fields where the people walk their dogs and start that conversation and... I don't know if she was going to be here tonight or not. No, no. it sounds like <clears throat> next month. Okay. We cover everything, everybody? I guess horse stalls are down the road when everything else comes together. Uh, AC for all classrooms. Who, who brought that up? I was at the board meeting last month. I think that was Cindy, right? No, your colleague. My colleague, oh, that's right, my colleague. Okay, so that's, why don't you get that in the notes, Ms. Deb, AC for all classrooms, so we can start getting that on our radar. That was just a suggestion that she had. All right, once more, anything else? Okay, got a lot of work to do. Motion to adjourn. So second. All in favor? Okay.